Hello, Mrs. Ajibola. Good evening, Mr. Akiva Joe. The organization is trying to do something you know, medium in West Africa has done before. Bring West African journalists together for a conference on journalism innovation. Tell us what the conference is expected to achieve. Yes, thank you so much. Um, so indeed, we are organizing um, West African Journalism Innovation Conference um, that we call WAJIC. And yes, it's the first of its kind in West Africa. And it seems to, it's going to, you know, bring together journalists, um, technology experts, um, that includes um, experts in the field of AI, um, other forms of digital innovations to just come together and discuss about the intersection between journalism, innovation, artificial intelligence, and other forms of technology. Now, um, someone is wondering why is that kind of convening? Um, why is it important? It's important because um, I, I like to think that we are approaching what some people would refer to as the fourth industrial revolution. And a very prominent feature of that world or that future is innovation and artificial intelligence. So there's been, you know, um, whispers, silent worries about how does artificial intelligence, for example, how does that impact the work that we do as journalists and you know, within other media spaces. So that conference seeks to help you know, ask those questions that perhaps have never been asked boldly and once and for all, you know, provide answers to them. So we're going to you know, be seeking where is the place of journalism within all of this evolution? What skills do journalists need to harm themselves with to reposition themselves, uh, to ensure that they, they remain relevant? Um, is, 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 the, is the fear about disruptions, about the work that we do, is it really, is it real? If it is real, how do we address it? So yeah, I think among several other things, um, that's what WAJIC is all about. How long have you been planning to hold WAJIC? And I ask this in relation to the fact that President Bola Tinubu has just been appointed uh, the head of ECOWAS in West Africa. Are you, is there any relationship between the two? Yeah, I, I like to say in all honesty that it's a, co it's, it's, it's a coincidence because I think the first time we muted the idea of WAJIC was at our annual retreat, um, which held this year, that was in January, you know, where we were discussing digital innovations. Um, as you would know, Center for Journalism Innovation and Development is, we are a, a leader within the think tank space for, for media. What we do is, you know, think for the media, uh, think for journalism. And it just occurred to us that that's something that we should be exploring, that intersection between innovation and journalism and technology. That's something that people, if there are talks about it, it's not in the open. Um, we've not conveyed all the voices that matter uh, to deliberate about how we position ourselves. So um, it, it's, it's, it's good that um, the president, uh, President Bola Metinubu, has now been appointed as the, um, the head of uh, ECOWAS. So I think it only reinforces what we have been, you know, thinking about. And as you know, uh, our work at CGID is not limited to Nigeria. So we are operational in Ghana, in the Gambia, in Sierra Leone in Liberia, and of course, so we are headquartered in Nigeria. So um, what it then means is that our thinking and our strategic planning where journalism and development is concerned is always um, about all these other countries, you know, um, within West Africa. So yeah, um, it's good that 
Nigeria itself is plugging in into um, the way CGID is thinking. That's good to hear. But then, uh, still looking at your reason for a West African conference, one would wonder how do you plan to manage the diversity, in West especially in relation to language? Majority mm. of the West African countries are francophone. Mm. How do you plan to manage that at such a conference? So, um, well, because this is first of its kind, so um, the corporate lingua we are adopting for this conference is mainly English, but we are already trying to see how we can make arrangement for um, translators, you know, people. So if we have, because we got applications from Lome, from um, Uganda, from Bene Republic, so uh, perhaps so we probably would have a crop of, you know, individuals from these other countries as well joining us. So there are going to be arrangements for you know, translators who would then help to relay um, these conversations in language that those delegates or delegates from those countries can relate with. Talking about your main focus, journalism innovation, some may argue that what journalism needs more at this time is finance. Hmm. Uh, uh, but you have appeared to be focusing on the cross. Uh, uh, the network between journalism, innovation, and development. But is there any part of it that is related to journalism finance? So I, I think part of the, one of the pathways to resolving the challenge of sustainability that the media is confronted with is also innovation. So, um, like um, uh, we, 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 we like to say that journalism itself has to continue to reinvent itself for it to um, continue to be relevant. So um, one of the panel sessions that we're going to be having, um, and that is going to be moderated by the editor-in-chief of Premium Times itself, uh, um, Musikilu Mojid, um, and, and you know, with other, other media uh, entrepreneurs, is focusing on the challenge of accountability, journalism, and sustainability. And so they would be discussing that nexus between the values of um, uh, uh, the model of value, which raises questions about ethics, about the profession itself, and values, which talks about the challenge of revenue and income. And I think most of the sessions that we uh, have uh, for Wajik, one way or the other, whether the ones that is talking about artificial intelligence and the future of journalism, uh, digital innovations, um, there's a conversation between Dapolon Ryomi and Richard Jongras of Google, all are going to be addressing that challenge of sustainability for the media because we cannot even begin to talk about journalism, its relevance, um, accountability uh, within democracy without resolving the challenge of the business model for journalism itself. So, uh, and over the years, you know, we, we've seen how digital, uh, digital um, uh, I, I don't know, I'm, I'm trying to be sure that I'm using the right words right now. Uh, I, I don't want to call them digital disruptions, right? But maybe for lack of better terms right now, let me just say that's what they are. So uh, the, the, the arrival of these digital platforms and how it disrupted the revenue model uh, for the media in terms of um, adverts, in terms of, you know, has constituted a very big strain on the work that we do. So, yeah, thanks to organizations like the CGID, you know, with the introduction of funding models for journalism. But we all know that that also comes with its own challenges. So uh, it's good that we're bringing somebody like Richard Jungras you know, of Google, to also come and if they are part of um, the digital um, innovations that uh, threatened the business model for, for um, journalism, they probably also have an idea of how we can adopt that same digital revolution to 
um, resolve this challenge of business model. So Wajik is also about how do we leverage technology? How do we leverage um, uh, innovations to address that challenge of sustainability? Because the bottom line is, if the media cannot sustain itself, it cannot perform that accountability role that is required for the health of our democracy across West Africa. But many journalists uh, would uh, uh, look at uh, people like Richard of uh, Google and say, these are the people who are actually disrupting journalism. Uh, and you are bringing in some of the keynote speakers, I believe. And, yes. Uh, and so, uh, Will you, will you allow journalists be able to ask him questions during his presentation? Oh, uh, because oh. I'm sure there will be journalists who will feel this an opportunity to actually to challenge Google. I, I, I feel like right now you're echoing what some do other journalists that I've had conversation with about Wajik. You, you kind of echoed um, their thoughts right now. So, um, like I said, Digital revolution is not something we can run away from. Whether we like it or not, it's from part of, of our realities. And, and if anybody is in doubt, just look at what the tussle right now between Elon Musk and, and Zuckerberg. You know, so the, the, the way to think about it is how do we find our own place? How do we, how does journalism, how, or, or media business, how do we ensure that we find it, it's a place for it within all of these revolutions that is happening. So um, I, I think that that Richard Jongras is going to be there. That we also have other experts, you know, within the field of technology, within the field of artificial intelligence, within the academia, you know, who are going to be talking about all of these disruptions. It means that we are getting somewhere about. Okay, so if you are part of the problem, then um, do you probably have um, a means of being part of the solutions? Look at what is happening, in, I think, is Australia already, you know, where I think uh, platforms like Google are now having to pay local news platforms, you know, um, for content that they generate. Perhaps that's the kind of conversation we should be having with platforms. So uh, I've always worried, it's always bothered me that journalists or, or newsroom invests humongous amount of money you know to fund investigation you know to you know generally run newsroom and generate news content and then to sponsor those some of those investigations that are in the interest of the public you have to pay facebook you have to pay twitter i, I think that is that's worrisome uh, and so right now, this kind of conference gives us an opportunity to begin to throw up this kind of conversation. Who should be paying who? You know, who should be paying who? Should it be journalists, you know, after seeking all this funding to do this kind of story, then paying the already rich uh, platforms that, and in the first instance, part of the reasons why we're here, or should they be the one, you know, not just through funding models, right, but revenue as, as a legitimate source of revenue, you know, providing resources for newsroom. There's also the worry, for example, um, about the, 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 the protection of online identities of newsrooms. So I worry that for digital online uh, or for digital news mediums that they, they, they exist at the whims and caprices of of um facebook likes of facebook and and twitter so if if twitter decides today to yank off the social media handle of say premium times what does that mean for press freedom what does that mean for the right of the people to information the right right of access to information so I, 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 I'm just I'm looking I, I do not have all the answers about how these conversations would go you know 
But I think that once and for all, we have that opportunity to throw up all of these issues. So um, yes, journalists can even send us their questions ahead. You know, because there is a, a, I mean, some of those questions can be sent to busola at the cgid.org. You can send your questions to info at the cgid.org. Uh, and so we can, so that we can also send these questions to some of these panelists ahead. But if there has ever been a time when we have the opportunity to explore this relationship between um, platforms, between innovations, between technology and journalism and democratic accountability, I think this is one of the um, convening that allow us to achieve that. Great. Uh, I, I personally look forward to it, and I'm sure Me too. many journalists and people who are interested in media Me too. Me would too. be. But then the next question would then be when you talked about uh, uh, the power of social media and the influence they can have on media organizations, one aspect of it would then be government regulation. Mm. Uh, uh, so, for example, at some point, the Nigerian government suspended Twitter, including uh, so a lot of media organizations in Nigeria mm -hmm. had to essentially not use their Twitter handles uh, in, at a time when Twitter was one of the largest uh, areas where they were getting uh, their readership from. Will government be well represented in these discussions, uh, the Nigerian government and also governments across West Africa? So, well, um, we, we invited some regulatory bodies, for example. Uh, we, we invited the NBC, uh, we invited um, the National Human Rights Commission. Um, we invited the government, uh, the Minist Ministry of Information. We also invited um, uh, electoral bodies from Nigeria, from Ghana, from Sierra Leone. Uh, we also invited, um, you know, leaders of bodies that represent journalists, you know. And we really hope that the cities convey as what it is, a platform for deliberations, a platform to understand the peculiarities of the challenges that confront us, not just as media, but as how our work relates to the society itself, and that, you know, um, we're hoping that they would, I, I am optimistic that they will all be represented and that we get the opportunity to not just deliberate together, but you know, arrive at action points that can move us all forward from here. So, in all your, uh, if I uh, if I understand the conference properly, you are expecting hundreds of hundreds of participants, including journalists, uh, policymakers, and the rest, and you are planning for a hybrid conference. Yes. How does this work in reality? Okay, so as much as we would have loved to maybe have thousands of journalists in person, you know, participating in this workshop, I mean, in this conference, um, this year being the first of its kind, we are able to have about 350 person participating um, physically here in Abuja. However, we've made the um, conference an hybrid one. So you can join in from wherever you are across the world. Um, we're not limiting the number of people that can register to join us virtually, but those of us that are going to be physically present at the Continental Hotel in Abuja are about 350 people. And I think the fact that it is going to be a hybrid event gives that opportunity for everyone who is interested in, you know, um, this kind of conversation to, to participate. So uh, I'm excited about, I don't, I, I, I'm not, I'm not, I, I can't say that I know the number of people we should expect, you know, um, from all our online participants, but I really am looking forward to a very impressive number of people, um, you know, to to join us. So it's going to be live streamed on all of our social media platforms, and we're also connecting with other um, media organisations to also um, hear it live for those who would not be in the room to join us uh, virtually. 
all these talks get to the issue of planning. So mm -hmm. you are bringing about 350 participants yes. from across West Africa. Yes, no, across uh, the world. Across the world, actually. but mainly from West Africa. But mainly from, from West Africa. About, about 300 to Abuja yes. to participate in this, in this lively discussion that you are telling us. How are you funding this? Um, so we, a, a big, a very big thank you now would have to go to the MacArthur Foundation for, for the excellent work that they are doing you know, um, to support journalism in Africa, to support transparency and accountability, not just in public spaces, but even in private spaces. So one of our notable funders for this event is the MacArthur Foundation. But we, we also are very grateful to organizations like the HBS and Rich Bowl Foundation. Um, in fact, I forgot to talk about the, our art exhibition. So the arrival date um, is going to feature a very, very wonderful experience. Date? So that's on the 24th of, of July. So on the evening of arrival, between 6 p.m. and 8 p.m., we are, again, for the first time, using arts to visualize the issue, issue of safety of journalists. And that speaks to the work that we do at the CGID. So I want to give you a context. Last year, we tracked about 54 attacks against journalists. But in Nigeria? In, in, in Nigeria. Now, this year, we are in June. And between January and June, we've tracked 79. And some of those attacks include incarceration. They include physical attacks where journalists are beating up, you know, where there's blood all over their bodies, where their, their equipment are damaged. Sometimes it's denial of information. There is the growing trend of slap you know, strategic um, litigation against pub, uh, public participation, you know, and it's worrying that these are ways of um, censor, not just censoring the media, but making the work that journalists do more difficult. Now, again, what is more worrying is the lack of accountability and the impunity that the perpetrators of this violence enjoy. So it, 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 in a democracy, you know, you would expect that where um, the right of a citizen is violated that, you know, um, that there's some form of prosecution and some form of punishment to serve as deterrence, right? It should even be more important when it is a journalist whose work borders around public interest and public purposes. Not in one instance, and I've said this on several other media platforms. And I hope those who have some role to play are listening and they are paying attention. Not in one instance, for example, in cases of journalists that have been killed in the course of their work as any prosecution taking place. So, you know, we've tried to use data to tell the story. We've tried to, you know, use words, texts, you know, publish to tell the stories. We're not getting the kind of responses that we want. And so for the first time again, we are using arts, visual arts, and we're partnering with the Society for Nigerian, uh, Society of Nigerian Artists, uh, Abuja chapter, to organize this art exhibition. Now, as a result of the, the violations of journalists' rights, we also have issues of trauma. So a journalist that is violated, that is beaten up, is traumatized and is unable to, you know, do that work as effectively as they should. So at the CJID, we've over the years had to support a very large number of journalists with psychosocial support. And um, unfortunately, it's one aspect of our work that we've not been able to get any support for in terms of funding. So we're also using that art exhibition as a means of fundraising, solely dedicated to um, psycho providing psychosocial intervention for journalists who are traumatized. In Nigeria or across Africa? Uh, for now, in Nigeria, but we're hoping that it's something that we can scale, you know, for journalists. I think we also, we've supported journalists from Ghana. 
uh, at some point. But we really hope that it's something that we can scale to for journalists across West Africa to enjoy, to, to um, benefit from. So the art exhibition, you must have RSVP, by the way, strictly by invitation. So we're going to be... So journalists who don't have money will not be able to attend that? Well, the good thing is that we are leaving the exhibition throughout the conference. So if you don't get to participate on the day of arrival, when you come on the 25th and on the 26th, you still get to view the artworks. You can even, so we're going to be auctioning artworks so people can buy. And when they're not buying, they can donate to the course. So it, it, it's an experience itself. I am looking forward to it and, and, I, and I hope the public is also. Definitely, I'm sure the public is, uh, uh, and we at Premium Times are very much interested in uh, such uh, a convening. But uh, before we go, uh, still on the issue of funding, why would, uh, I mean, you've talked about the digital uh, uh, platforms that are essentially taking all the money, away, essentially taking all the money away from the media. One would expect that platforms like Google, Facebook will be interested in sponsoring a conference like this. Did you reach out to them? Uh, why are they not? Uh, the money is conferences like this. Uh, well, um, uh, so yes, we did reach out to them. Um, uh, well, up to as as of now, we have not gotten any word from um, any of those platforms indicating their interest to give us financial support for Wajik. But I, I am. It's not too late. So I'm, nobody knows what would happen. We still have. Well, how many days away? I, I, to Wajik, um, Wajik is, uh, today is, um, we're about nine days, I think nine days away, right? So it's still a whole nine days away. We are hoping that we can still uh, get some, some, some miracles, uh, if you believe in miracles, can still happen. Um, yeah, but did we reach out? Yes. But have we heard from them? No. I mean, the other side of that question would then be, for a conference that is focused on West Africa, that will likely at least contribute to development of democracy through journalism mm -hmm. in the subcontinent, mm -hmm. why are there no local sponsors? Why is it MacArthur, Eric Bowes? Why are the Dangote Foundations? Why are the Boa Foundation? Why are they not involved in sponsoring? Are, are you reaching out to them? So, are they aware? What are they saying? Yes, um, at least we, we reached out to the Dangote, we've reached out to Boa, um, we reached out to the Danjuma Foundation, um, a host of other diplomatic um, communities. And um, like I said, well, Wajik is still nine days away, and I do not want to start nursing that pessimism that oh, it's already, we're already at the end of the road, no, no support is coming. So I, I am, my team and I at the, C, at the CGID, we're very hopeful that um, we will still get to hear from this local organization. And we really hope that they see the relevance of this, that they under, it, 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 you know, it's, it's something that people cannot immediately connect the relevance of journalism and the work that journalists do to their immediate lives and experiences and perhaps businesses. You know, sometimes the usual thinking is that even journalists are enemies, you know. Uh, people just forget that these are people, journalists are just people doing their work and that in a very, very critical way, the work that journalists do um, is like the wheels in the cycle that runs our society in terms of transparency, in terms of accountability, in fact, in terms of solutions. So perhaps when this understanding becomes very clear, um, even local organizations will see a reason why this kind of convening is very important and why they should be a part of it. It could also be that because, well, this is the first of its kind and, you know, um, they're just hearing about Wajik and, um, but, I am hopeful that perhaps this conversation gets to them and that, like I said, nine days is still some days away and that some, some very great things can still happen. Uh, we, can, we, we still hope to hear from them between now and then. Thank you very much, Mr. Sanjibala. Thank you so much, Mr. Akimbajo. Thank you, uh, viewers. Uh, 
this is Premium Times and uh, we just had an audience, this is uh, Sola Ajibola who is uh, supervising the organization of the West African Journalism Innovation Conference. Have a great day everyone.